What is up, Transit? I'm so excited to be here with you on Transit Online. Now, I gotta say, last week, Danelle, he thought he was kind of cool. He teleported to, like, what, the other side of the table? I I think that, uh, I think that I can go a little bit farther than that. So, uh, just give me a second, and, uh, we'll see. In three, two, one. Where am I? Oh, yeah, at home. Oh, would you look at that? Huh. Oh. Might take a little break. See you in a few minutes. Get back. All right. Oh wow, that was uh, that, that was pretty far. I might uh, might need some water. Oh, wow, really takes a lot of energy out of you. All right, all right. I think we're good. I think we're good. All righty. We um, wow, that has really zapped my energy. What are we doing next? Oh, that's right. We're playing. We are going to be hopping into a game. Uh, now it is called Match It, and um, I'm gonna need the rules here because this is kind of complicated. All right, now we are gonna see a a picture kind of like this here at the bottom, and it's got two sides with items on either side. You have to be the first person to guess, uh, to correctly guess which item is on both sides. So uh, I think uh, I think we'll just well, I think we'll do a little tester. So we'll let's see one slide. All right, we see there's a bunch of items. Which one is on both sides? Uh, oh, this is an easy one. It's the, uh, you see, there's the volleyball on both sides. So that's how the game's gonna work. It's, uh, it's gonna be pretty fun. And uh, I think we can hop right into it with our first question. All right. Wait, what? All right, Transit, I'm gonna need your help here in the chat. I have no idea what it is. You guys have probably got it already. I don't know, probably. You guys are pretty quick at this stuff. All right, let's see what the answer is. Uh, oh my goodness, how did I miss that? That was massive. Oh wow, I'm not very good at this. I clearly need to look a little bit better. See, I would total. I was not very good at I Spy, so I feel like I, uh, I feel like I need a handicap somehow. All right, next question. Well, I see the bomb again. I don't see anything. Oh, I see it. We got the penguin here at the top and the penguin here at the bottom. I got it, guys. Is that what it is? And I'm I was correct. Alrighty. Wow, that is uh this is getting difficult. They're getting much smaller. Alright, let's see the next one. I see the penguin again, but I don't think it's that. All right, and let's see the answer. There was a self. Oh, they flipped it the other way around. It threw me off a little bit. All right, let's see. Let's see the next one. And now. All right, I'll give you an extra couple seconds in five, four, three, two, one. And let's see what the answer is. Ah, the little sun up there. I see, I see. All right, all right. All right, and the next question is?
All right, I think this one's an easy one. We'll give you another five seconds in five, four, three, two, one. And let's see the answer. Ah, the lightning bolt in the bottom corner and right on the side. They, uh, they flipped it upside down, so they're, they're really trying to trick us here. All right, next question. In five, four, three, a two, and a one. Let's see the answer. Ah, the little green, little yellow splat in the bottom. Now, see, I personally think that this is mustard. I think this is definitely a mustard splat. What do you guys think? Throw it in. Throw it in the chat. Throw it in the chat. I know me, uh, JB, and Janelle will definitely, will definitely put in our answers. I think it's mustard. All right, we'll we'll do one more. Uh, and we'll give, I think we'll only give five seconds to see if we can get this one. And, all right, let's see the last one. And now, all right, five, four, three, two, one. And the answer is, oh wow, a little eight ball in here. I didn't even see that. I totally missed it. Now, all right, that was quite a fun game. Now, if you are new here in transit, I just wanna let you know that transit is a place that you can discover a faith of your own, invite your friends, and as you may have figured out, have a ton of fun. Now, I also wanna let you know that if you are brand new, which means this is either your first or second time, there is a link in the description that you can click, you can fill out a form, and we will send you some transit swag. Now, I, I personally think transit swag is pretty cool. Um, but I've been told that I'm not new here, so I can't fill out the form. But you guys can fill out the form, and you can get that transit swag. Now, here in transit, we have uh, we have a friend, and uh, his name is Chad. He, he's new with us. He, uh, he isn't fully a member of the team, but, you know, he's kind of trying out, so to say. Um, and he's a, he's a little bit of a, a, we a weird guy, and we'll just put it like that. But he has some very interesting... Very interesting things come into his mind. So we got a new segment called Deep Thoughts with Chad, and we're gonna check it out right now. Oh, hey, Chad here. You know, I have some deep thoughts. And I was wondering if I could run them past you guys. So, my first thought is, isn't the dentist the exact opposite of the tooth fairy? Because instead, the dentist gives you teeth and takes your money for it. Isn't volleyball just hardcore hot potato? If you had a brain transplant, would you have your own thoughts? Or would you have the thoughts of the person before? Isn't asking permission to ask a question, asking a question without permission? Do you think that the ocean is only salty because the land never waves back? And that was Deep Thoughts with Chad. All right, now those are some pretty crazy ideas. I don't know, some of them might be right, some of them might be, we don't know. I have a feeling we're gonna be seeing a lot more of Chad in the coming months. Now, we are heading into our last week of a series we're in called Moods, and we're going to be hearing from a friend of ours called Jean, and she's going to be talking about how guilt doesn't have to be the boss of you. Now, before we hop in, I'm going to pray. Dude, I just thank you for each one of the students who is here watching, uh, and I just ask that you will remind them that you are with them and that they can come to you whenever they want. And I just pray that as they're listening to Jean, that you, they will just remember that it is not uh, her talking, but you talking through her. And I just pray that they don't remember that 
throughout the video. In our name we pray. Amen. If you could do anything in the world and get away with it, what would you do? If you knew there would be like no punishment, no consequences and no regret. I mean like would you play video games all day long? Spend all your parents money on your very own sneaker collection? Eat dessert for every meal? Take one of everything from your favorite store? Hack into your teacher's computer and give yourself all A's? I'm sure we could all make a pretty long list of things we'd do if we were 100% sure we wouldn't experience any consequences for them later. Because as I'm sure you know, there's nothing worse than having to face the consequence of something you did wrong. One time at my church across the street, they had just recently built this Target and the street that it was across, it was like five lanes, and I really wanted candy when I was in middle school. And I thought, hey, you know what? I'll just kind of leave the church property and cross this five lane road to get to Target and buy some candy and uh, come right back. And no one would even know. But my mom found out, and it was not a good day for me. You've been there though, right? Maybe your punishment or consequence wasn't exactly like mine, but I'm sure you've experienced something similar when you've broken a rule or done something wrong. And it probably made you feel a bit like this person. In fact, that experience or feeling is exactly why we don't do all the things we might wish we could do without regret or consequence. We want to avoid getting in trouble. We want to avoid feeling like this. We want to avoid letting people down. We want to avoid the feeling of guilt. And guilt is one of those moods or feelings we experience when we've done something we know we shouldn't have done. It's the shame or regret or weight we feel when we know we've made a mistake or a choice that's hurt us or someone else. And that feeling can stick with us for a really long time. In my experience, I've learned there are two kinds of guilt. First, there's false guilt. This is when we feel guilty about something, but we're not actually guilty of anything. And sometimes we bring this false guilt on ourselves. We're hard on ourselves, so when we get a lower grade on a test than we wanted, or forget to do our chores, or accidentally hurt a friend's feelings, or unintentionally leave someone out in group. We get overwhelmed with guilt, and we carry that guilt around with us. We feel like we made a huge mistake, and we beat ourselves up about it because we feel guilty. In reality, we don't have to. We didn't do those things on purpose. We didn't bring those things on ourselves. But false guilt tells us otherwise. The second kind of guilt is real guilt. We feel guilty because we are guilty. We know we told that lie or that we cheated on that test, or we spread that rumor, or we hurt that friend on purpose. We know that the things we did or said was wrong. We know that we hurt somebody. And because of that, we feel guilty. The problem is, we're not really sure what to do with the guilt that we feel. Some of us try to ignore it. We deny it. We act as if we did nothing wrong or have nothing to feel guilty about. We do our best to pretend the guilt just isn't even there. But what I've learned from experience is that ignoring guilt only makes it more powerful. It gives it more time and space to grow into something bigger, something that has more power to motivate us to make more bad choices or tell more lies to cover up the guilt we're trying to avoid in the first place. And eventually, the weight of the guilt becomes too much to carry. 
Just look at this thing. I can barely hold this thing up. It's carrying so much guilt that it's weighing us down and impacting us in some not so great ways. And the truth is, the more we try to run from guilt, the more it has the potential to control us, the more it has the power to take over and be the boss of us. Others of us struggle with guilt because honestly, we don't think we feel it. We do something that we know is wrong and something we shouldn't do and well, that's it. End of story. Maybe we get caught, get punished, experience a consequence, or maybe we don't. Either way, we don't really feel guilty about what we've done. We don't carry that backpack full of guilt around with us. Some of us maybe even wonder if we should feel bad about not feeling all that bad. I mean, shouldn't we feel a little guilt at some point? Sometimes we even let guilt turn into anger. We get mad at ourselves for what we did. We get mad that we got caught. We get mad that we don't feel guilty enough. We get mad that we can't just do whatever we want without consequence. And eventually, that anger leads to making more choices that lead to more guilt. And the cycle just goes on and on. Here's what I want you to see about guilt. Just like any emotion, the feeling itself isn't bad. When we experience guilt, it's a sign to us that something is off. Something needs to change. Something needs to get right within us. And that's a good thing in my opinion. If we didn't experience guilt, we wouldn't be able to recognize when we needed to take a step to change or make something right. It's not the guilt itself that I want you to run from. It's letting it control you, push you, boss you around into believing something that just isn't true about you. It's when the guilt becomes so great that it weighs you down and controls how you feel and how you act. Now maybe you're sitting there thinking, well of course you're talking about guilt at church. I mean, isn't that what church is supposed to do? Make you feel guilty? Actually, no. In fact, Jesus actually came to save us from ever having to let our guilt control or boss us around. And I know that not just because the Bible says it, but because I've experienced it. I've experienced the freedom from guilt that I want you to experience too. To help us get there, I'm gonna look at a passage in the Bible written by a guy named Paul. Now a little background on Paul. He wasn't always the incredible leader of faith that most people remember him to be. Sure, he did a lot of amazing things to spread the message of Jesus and grew the early church. But before that, he was a completely different person. In fact, he even had a different name, Saul, like with an S, Saul. And as Saul, well, he did a lot of really bad, like really terrible things. Things he had plenty of reason to feel guilty about. Things like lying and hate and even murder. And then Saul had an experience with Jesus and everything changed. I mean, even his name changed. He literally went from being called Saul with an S to being called Paul with a P. But what, what didn't change was the past. The fact that Paul had done a lot of things that made him feel guilty were still there. A lot of things that might have made him believe he shouldn't even show up at church, let alone be a leader. That's what I think makes what he wrote here all the more interesting. Let's take a look. So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. So let's start with the first part of Paul's passage. The part where we talked about condemnation. One of the reasons we don't want to deal with our mistakes or mess ups or sins is because it leaves us feeling condemned. That's probably not a word most of us know or would even use, but it really just means to be guilty, to have the kind of guilt that is so big and so heavy and so overwhelming that you can't get out of it. The kind of guilt that makes you believe you'll always be defined by or running from your mistakes. The kind of guilt that weighs you down and holds you back. Maybe you're carrying that kind of guilt. Maybe you feel condemned because of something you've done. But immediately in this passage, Paul said that it doesn't have to be this way. Let's take a look one more time at what exactly he said. So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. Paul said that if we believe in Jesus, there is no condemnation. There's no guilt too big to keep us from him. There is no guilt too heavy to weigh us down because Jesus set us free. And Paul finished with saying this, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power that leads to death. When Jesus came to earth and died on the cross, 
He took the weight of all our mistakes with him. He took the power of those mistakes, which leads to the death of things like our relationships, our future, our reputation, and so much more. And instead, Jesus gave us the power of his spirit, the power that brings us life, and that is a power stronger than guilt. Guilt doesn't have to be the boss of you. Paul experienced this firsthand. Because of Jesus, Paul was able to step out of the guilt of all the things he'd done in the past. Now, of course, none of us are dealing with the weight of things that Paul was, like murder. But we're all probably dealing with guilt in some form or another. Maybe it's the thing you said to your mom or the way you treated that girl. Or maybe it was the lie you told your teacher or the, the way you talked to your siblings. Maybe it's the habit you know it's wrong but you can't seem to stop doing. Maybe it's something you regret something you wish you'd done differently, something that's left you with some guilt. And if you're not careful, that guilt will tell you what to do. It will tell you to stay away from church, to hide what you've done and to cover up your mistakes. It will lead you to not ask forgiveness and to keep ignoring the guilt in hopes that it'll just go away. But Jesus gives us a different option. He gives us a chance to start over. He gives us grace. He gives us freedom. Is this a free pass to do whatever we want? No, not at all. But it's a new way to look at the mistakes that we've made. A freedom to try again. A way to not be weighed down by our feelings of guilt. It's a chance to get rid of our guilt once and for all. Guilt doesn't have to be the boss of you. So because we find freedom from guilt when we follow Jesus, here's what I want you to know. You can stop being so hard on yourself. Maybe you're someone who struggles with a lot of false guilt. Or maybe you're someone who struggles with the weight of guilt that others try to put on you. Or maybe you're someone who is dealing with very real guilt for some very real mistakes right now. No matter where you fall, the truth is that there's grace. And that means that Jesus isn't hard on you. So you can stop being so hard on yourself. You can stop beating yourself up for what you've done or what you feel. You can stop believing the lies that, that guilt or even other people tell you about who you are because of what you've done. Instead, you can embrace the grace that Jesus gives you to live guilt free. You can stop being so hard on others. This one I know we all do sometimes because it's easy to look around and think about all the reasons we know other people should feel guilty for what they've said or what they've done. It's easy to let that define who they are in our minds. But when we accept Jesus' grace for ourselves, we can and we should also extend it to others. It doesn't mean that what they did or said wasn't wrong or hurtful, but it does mean that we can offer them forgiveness and a chance to start over, just like Jesus offers us. Even if they don't ask for it, we can still extend grace and forgiveness. You can let guilt remind you, but not define you. Remember how we said that guilt doesn't have to be a bad thing on its own? It can be a sign to us that something isn't right, that something needs to change. And because of Jesus, that's where it stops. Guilt can remind us of the path we've walked before. It can help us not go down that road or make those same mistakes again. But it doesn't get the final say in who we are. It doesn't get to define us. You can make it right. This one is big. Sometimes we think when we do something wrong, the most important thing for us to do is just pray and ask God for forgiveness. And while that's a really important step, it's not the only step. Often we need to be brave enough to make it right with the other person. Whatever it is that you're feeling guilty about doing or saying that may have hurt someone else, you need to work to make it right, to apologize, to ask for their forgiveness as well, to try and do better next time. It isn't always easy to keep guilt from defining who we are. I get it. That's why we have groups to not only extend grace to you, but also help you extend grace to yourself, to help you move past the decisions you've made and the things you've done so that the guilt can remind you instead of define you. Remember, guilt doesn't have to be the boss of you. And as you head to your group, I want you to think about this question. What's one thing I usually do when I feel guilty about something? Wow, what a great message. Now, if I had one takeaway from it, I would say that it is that God has given us grace. And grace is forgiveness. Now, God has forgiven us, and because of that, we can forgive others, and we can show others grace. So the next time that you're at school or that your sibling maybe bugs you and you feel like just getting angry. <laughs> All right, now, Transit, there's one last thing, and I think you guys know what it is. It 
is a challenge. Now, we have a pretty cool challenge this week. We are gonna throw a picture up on the screen, and the first person to tell us where the transit logo is on that picture will win their very own edition of Spot It. Now, all right, I, th I think we can just hop in. So let's throw the picture up now. <laughs> all right, that was a pretty sweet challenge. Now, to everyone, we will make sure that the prize gets to your door on your step. You won't even have to leave your house. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm super excited because we are about to head into transit groups. And if you are not yet in a transit small group, I don't want you to miss out. I want you to head to connectuschurch.com slash transit groups. Link is in the description. It's also underneath, probably like right here somewhere. I don't know. It's somewhere on the screen, also in the description, where you can click on the link and sign up for your very own transit small group. Now, I can't wait to see you guys next week on Transit Online. See ya.